What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and some more Bolt action. So following up from our unboxing of the new Plastic Italians, we're going to take a look at the awesome new campaign book. So this is it, Campaign Italy, Soft Underbelly, and this is one of the thicker ones. So definitely there's a lot to chew through here. So as we always do in these sort of initial uh, flip throughs, we're going to basically go fairly briskly uh, and not focus too much on any one thing, but just to kind of provide you guys with an overview. And then in a later series of videos, we'll do a deep dive into this and uh, many of the other campaign books. So stay tuned for that. So again, this is on the thicker side, so it's always good to see because there's going to be a lot here in Italy. Uh, the Italian front uh, isn't always the one that gets a whole lot of attention in gaming, which um, is a shame uh, just because um, there's just so much um, wonderful stuff to chew through there, but also just provide some, certainly some different terrain types, um, different opportunities there for hobby and modeling and all kinds of stuff like that. So definitely a good one, um, but hopefully also accompanied by more support in the form of, um, you know, appropriate terrain and stuff like that. That hasn't always been the easiest to come by. But um, so, yeah, definitely worth checking out, especially, you know, if you are an Italian player and or just want to try something different again. So and then again, it's not just about Italians either. So, of course, you got um, Germany here involved, um, but then also um, some allied forces and everything else. So when we flip through, we can see, as always in these books, we get quite a bit of new scenarios. So, again, even if you're not playing any of these factions somehow um you know a campaign book is always going to present you with a, a lot of new scenarios so if you're tired uh if you feel like you've just outplayed all existing or available scenarios to you take a look at a campaign book it's just something fresh and you know you could play sort of um uh, what if scenarios by putting forces into the italian theater that weren't there but just to try something along those lines so anyway we get here operation husky is the first part of the book um Race for Messina, the invasion of Italy, and onward. So, uh, and then uh, the waterline. And then, as always, we also get some new units for everybody, some new um, theater selectors, and so on. And again, this is a big, chunky book. And uh, at the start, we always get a little bit of a history background, but it continues on here. So, we also tend to get more special characters, so, you know, historical um, named characters. Again, theater selectors, and then some new rules for playing in um, this setting, or just uh, updated rules that exist elsewhere. So, minefields we've seen in many of the campaign books, um, and so on and so forth. So, um, so jumping in here. So again, we get a little bit of a history background, and what this is uh, about. So again, sort of post um, fighting in Africa, and then the eventual um, sort of mid-war invasion of Italy and liberation of Italy. So we start off with Husky, the Allied plans. And again, first up was Sicily and sort of the conquest of that. And jumping into the Allied plans, again, we get plenty of good background, so you have the historical context for it. And... From there, you can see what the um, you know the allies and also the Axis were trying to do to either take or defend their territories here. So again, lots of fun scenarios. So first up, we get Biazza Ridge, and again, lots and lots of supplemental things here. Storming the Pig's Snout. Play it if for nothing else than just the name of the scenario. And again, what you can also do with these is, you know, work on linking things together in a campaign. Um, and, you know, some of the other uh, books and supplements out there will provide you with sort of campaign guidance. So you can um, also supplement that with this and just um, play a wonderful, um, you know, what if are you able to keep the allies from even getting a foothold in Italy? Or, you know, um, are you as the allies able to push the, the Germans, the Italians back and off this island and then further up into the peninsula and everything else? So again, lots of wonderful opportunities, and because, again, the Italian theater just has never really gotten that much love um, in most games, um, then this should be fresh for a lot of people, so, and chances are you will uh, learn something, too. Messina, of course, so again, you get everything going on there, so... And the actual invasion. Salerno, of course. The landings there. So if you wanted to play a beach 
invasion scenario and you didn't want to just do Omaha uh, or, or D-Day for you know the umpteenth uh, time, this is a great alternate way of doing that um, if you want that kind of experience, but again, something different. So taking on an airfield. So, and again, at some point we will cover all these scenarios and things from these uh, many campaign books in detail. So there's a lot, a lot to do there. So again, we're going fairly briskly here, but just to again, give you guys a kind of the big picture. So, you know, and there's just so many different scenarios. We're already on the 13th one here. So again, so much gaming packed into uh, these campaign books, especially these thicker ones. So this is definitely on the uh, the big boy side of campaign books. So now we get into new units for a bit here. So uh, again, new Italian units to start off with. And again, presents some wonderful opportunities, especially with the new plastics to kit bash, create unique things for the campaigns. And again, it's just a fun thing for a hobby group as well. You know, if everyone's invested in a campaign, everybody can pick up some new things and kind of build these specialist units, um, unique units from scratch and go from there. So and generally lots of cool things available here. Getting some new German units. So again, it's not just purely about the Italians. So Germans, of course, were there, so you get lots of opportunities there. Some Luftwaffe units, Fallschirmjäger. You, know, you could uh, recreate uh, the rescue of Mussolini if you really wanted to. Getting into British units, um, you have Indian infantry as uh, uh, available as well, Canadians. Other Commonwealth forces. So, and again, there's lots of unique things. So even if you don't want to play, you know, the typical larger game, you can break this down into a lot of smaller commando actions and play like bolt action firefighter. Just come up with smaller uh, combat patrol type games for bolt action. So, you know, things like Popsky's Private Army, just fun stuff here. So again, we're not going to spoil it or um, go into too much detail right here, but you have just a wealth of opportunity here on the gaming and the hobby side. So, and again, the U.S. isn't left out. So, you know, you have at least four um, factions represented in the book. So then there's lots for everybody. So hence why it's kind of a good buy for like a typical gaming group. Lots of different players will be represented in here. If you want to play the Devil's Brigade... The Black Death, Darby's Rangers, X-Force, 82nd Airborne, and then we get into some Italian heroes. So Major General Enrico Franceschi, if I'm pronouncing it right, and then Sub-Lieutenant Angiolino Navari, some German heroes, so Von During, Hans Meyer, Heinz Meyer, uh, another Heinz here, uh, Heinz Paul Adolf. And for those who always wonder, you know, no, these books do not come spiral bound, but uh, as long as it's not a hardcover, I tend to spiral bind my books, so I can actually leave it open to the page I want instead of worrying about breaking increasing spines and stuff like that. Um, Wilhelm Schmaltz, and then we get to British heroes, so we got Robert Paddy Main, Edward Clapham, Major Paul Triquet, Tri Tri U.S. troops, James Jumpin' Jim Gavin. So, worth reading up on just for the name, if nothing else. Hey, Patton, of course. And we got also Colonel, uh, Colonel William L. Darbo Darby. Robert T. Frederick. And we get into theater selectors as well. So, again, if you're tired of the way your existing army plays, another great part about these campaign books, new army lists uh, for them. So, that will certainly provide... Some new opportunities, some new challenges for everybody. Germans, of course, gets things here. So, and again, we will review all these in detail at one point or another.
So again, yeah, if you're looking for something that's mid-war that isn't, you know, just Eastern Front and a little something different, kind of like a follow-on from the Africa campaign, of course, uh, and you want to play in the West, then this is uh, fantastic for you. A lot of this will be new. Again, we get British and American theater selectors, so there's just plenty of things to chew through. We still have a bit of the book left, and we're, you know, already over 150 pages here. So, you know, uh, again, this is just, these thicker ones are fantastic value for money just for all of the new things that are covered here. And especially if you are playing multiple different armies, um, you know, the ones listed here, then, you know, this is just fantastic stuff here. Lastly, in the appendix, so again, just some new generic units here. So headquarters units, so chaplains, mule teams, horse-drawn limbers, then some new rules here. So demo charges, hey, Bangalore's hear about that more for D-Day, but you have it here. Different things for multinational forces, ad hoc things, campaign rules too. So um, so ruling the skies, poor air to ground coordination, SAS saboteur teams. And again, the fun thing too is, you know, if you're in that, invested really in the um, World War II ecosystem here for Warlord, you know, you can jump into things like some small games are like Blood Red Skies to supplement things, um, dip into, you know, Cruel Seas or Victory at Sea, um, and just have a ball um, with all these different possibilities here. So really, the, the the possibilities are really just limited by what you and your, your gaming group want to get into. Um, some rules for rain and fog. Fun stuff here. Minefields. Oops. Here, digging in, um, how to do that, fortifications, different types of concealment and bunkers, rubble rules. So again, a lot of these we'll see in, um, repeated in multiple campaign books. They might just change slightly across um, the different books to make it a little bit more unique for that setting. Sewers as well, if you really want to go in-depth and create all that. And then that's basically the end of the book. So we're topping out at about 177 pages here. Um, again, cannot recommend enough. Uh, so something different, certainly, than, um, again, what is typically presented for your gaming options for when you're playing World War II. You know, a lot of it's basically D-Day, Western Front, late in the war, or Eastern Front, Stalingrad type of stuff, or Africa, um, or sometimes now, um, you know, Pacific battles. So Italy is kind of just the, the forgotten uh, theater sometimes, and this does a lot to rectify that. So this is definitely a fantastic book that Warlord has put out, as they've done uh, so often recently with these newer campaign books. So, you know, especially if you're playing Italians or thinking about Italians, now's the time to jump in. Check out the plastics um, to get you started for minis, but then definitely pick this campaign book up along with your army books. This is a definite must-buy if you are uh, into this theater at all or just want to learn more and have some new opportunities. So check it out, guys. Hit us up in the comments with your thoughts. Uh, is there anything that Warlord missed on this? Anything you would have liked, liked to have seen? Again, we will be getting into this in detail uh, in the near future here, um, along with other campaign books, so just uh, keep that in mind. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if you want to support the channel, check out the link in the description. Um, pop over to Warlord. Anything you pick up there helps support us. And then we will be back in the next one. Take care.